It's a ring. It's three to four feet taller than reality. Its ropes are red, white, and blue. Its platform is blank stretched canvas. Commentators say it's built for a man. Promoters say there's room for my competitor. And I, there's gloves and coaches and centers and punches, strategy, knockout, blood, sweat, and tears. Entrepreneurship is a boxing match. We, the women, know how to stay light on our feet. We slide through insecurity. We shuffle through sexual harassment. Me too. We dip and block, duck and land. Then suddenly, the predefined role of woman calls our name. Wife, feminist, mother, <laughs> grandma, cook, auntie, babysitter, nasty woman, pow, right in the kisser. I lose balance, fall. Face against platform, I heard my ego crack when I realized that my male competitor has more mirrors in his dressing room. Commentators say, you're a woman, this is not your place. The referee counts down, you don't belong here. Stay down, he shouts. VCs fund people who look like them and I don't look like them. I didn't learn how to box in school. My parents are not boxers, never learned how to coach or train. My life is just a corner. The referee shouts, eight, seven, Six, I breathe. This game is rigged, but I'm the only species on earth that can bleed for a month and not die. I am badass. Even if I bow out and get a corporate job, I would still make less than a man lording over my remains on this platform. Five, four, three, get up, shall we? Pin a Nike commercial to your memory. Remember that you don't get in where you fit in, you fit in until you get in, because fitting in is about character, and getting in is about access. You're already in the match. Get up. Bite the hand that feeds you. Burn the bridges you never want to cross again. You got this. Slide, duck, jab, land. And remember, entrepreneurship is a boxing match, and you know how to stay light on your feet. Today is going to be epic. Today is going to be amazing. All right, here we go. Goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> she does not Thank understand you. business. You are really clear. Thank we are you. hungry. Cocoa butter and black girl magic through the screen. <laughs> okay, I love your energy. You are the power. This is life changing. Yeah. yeah. Welcome everyone, I'm Quinn Conyers, your energetic MC and master moderator. And you're watching the Black Girl Ventures Beauty Pitch Competition sponsored by Rare Beauty Brands and Ulta Beauty. This is not your average pitch event. We're gonna have an awesome and amazing experience. A panel of experts, or as we call them, champions, will ask the founders questions and give feedback. But you, the audience, will have the final say. The BGB pitch style actually comes from black history. Did you know in the early 1900s, during the Great Migration, white landowners raised the rent and black people threw rent parties, where the admission fees were used as a way to prevent evictions. These were not just any parties. You had people like Langston Hughes and Duke Ellington helping with these events. Now here we are, our ancestors' wildest dreams, providing access to capital through engaging communities. You will watch six awesome and amazing women pitch their business to a set of judges we call champions. Now each participant gets three minutes to pitch. The champions do not determine the winner. You do, you are the power. You will vote with your dollars for your favorite pitch at Raisify.co. That's R-A-I-S-I-F-Y dot C-O. Your vote is worth more than a like. Your donation creates a grant for the person you voted for. Your vote can change a life, sustain a small business, and have a major positive impact on families and communities. 
Now let's meet our champions. Up first, we have Chris Hobson, CEO of Rare Beauty Brands. Next, we have Dawn Myers, CEO of The Most. And last but certainly not least, we have Tanisha Brooks, Senior Buyer Prestige Cosmetics at Ulta Beauty. So champions, Dawn, I'm gonna start with you. What's the best piece of business advice you've ever received? Quinn, the best piece of business advice I've ever received is that along the way, you're gonna get a ton of feedback from lots of people with beautiful experience, deep experience. But at the end of the day, you know what's right for your company and you've gotta use that intuition to do what's right. Love it. Tanisha? For me, it's about the passion. So find what you're passionate at because that would equate to success. All right. And for me, as a, a guy who started a, f a few businesses, uh, early in the process when you're at that startup stage, you really just need to never, ever, ever give up. Because if you give up, the startup is done. But if you just keep on moving forward, the startup has a chance of success. All right. Thank you, champions, for sharing your business advice with me. All right. Well, let's get this pitch contest started. Up first, we have Sarah Green, founder of The Braid Releaser. Good afternoon. My name is Sarah Green. I'm the CEO and founder of The Braid Releaser. Our mission is to conquer the world one braid at a time. Before I begin, let me tell you a little bit about how The Braid Releaser started. My mother, Angela Green, created the tool at, in 1992 to provide a better mother-daughter bonding experience. However, due to lack of funding, and the responsibilities of being a single mother, she tabled the idea. But I am proud to say 25 plus years later, we brought the Brave Releaser into the market. The pandemic has forced women of color to change their hair care regimen. Protective styles, protective styles being the go-to style, especially braids. We realized that braids Excuse me. We realized that braids have been the go-to style and we needed the braid releaser. And that's why we created it. The braid releaser is easily gliding through the hair. It's a pain-free experience, is time efficient, and it's double-sided to accommodate medium to large size braids. Look at the comparison here. The red tail tooth comb has no grip. The material is not durable and its fine teeth loses a considerable amount of hair. And the braid releaser mitigates all of those problems. Look at the opportunity. African-American women will spend $2.5 billion annually on hair products alone. African-American women spend about $54.4 million on ethnic hair and beauty aids. Our business model is currently through our e-commerce site. However, we look forward to bringing the Brave Releaser to salons and to retailers. We had the greatest opportunity to partner with Fun Black Founders during our crowdfunding campaign. We had over 200 pre-orders and generated a revenue of $12,000. With this funding, this will allow us to expand our product line. In 2022, this year, we'll be able to add a peppermint scalp oil, a detangler, a braid gel, and a scalp rinse. So what's the bigger picture? We want to provide a one-stop shop, a braid bar. So look at who we have behind this amazing brand, myself, my mother, the creator, and our advisor, Ariel Lauren, who is the CEO and founder of 100K Incubator. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Sarah, for sharing your business with us. Thank you. <laughs> All right, champions, the braid releaser. Tanisha, I'm going to come to you first. You're right in my view. What do you think or do you have any feedback? My first um, question for you, thank you, Sarah, first of all, for being here and presenting your product. Um, can you walk us through how do you actually use um, your product? Yes, uh, so the Braille Releaser is a 3D printed tool and it's double-sided with an ergonomic handle. So on the tip end, it's a fine edge and on the bottom, it's a wider edge so that you can handhold it and 
release the braids um, as you go um, to the end all the way to the top of the root. Um, it's easy to use. It's very lightweight um, and it accommodates, as I mentioned, um, a medium to large size braids. And what's the retail? The retail at the moment is $20. Any other feedback, Chris or Dawn? At twenty dollars, have you had any feedback from consumers on on that on that price point? So initially, when we first started our brand, um, our retail was about twenty five dollars because we were actually including the shipping. And as we're doing now, we want to provide a premium product. However, we are considering our consumer. We we keep our consumer in mind, so we did lower the price so that it makes it more affordable to our consumer. Any other feedback or questions from the champions? I have one more question. Um, Sarah, when you think about the positioning of the product, do you see this more so as a salon product um, being sold in um, braid bars that are currently existing, or do you see this as filling a need for the average consumer? We want to make it available to you anywhere. If you are at a salon and you are getting braids, we want you to be able to get that that tool in your hand. And so we want to provide it anywhere. But absolutely, to answer your question, we want to fill that need. We want Black women when they're wearing braids and Black men where they have braids and they or anyone when they come into the store, we want them to know that they're all tools just for them to keep their hair healthy and long. So champions, the braid releaser. I, I, Tanisha, I'm gonna start with you because you had a, a couple different questions. Um, you know, it's interesting because I'm like, hmm, $20. I mean, the comb wasn't bad, but what do you think about the price point? I think the price point is a little bit high, um, especially to an average consumer. So I think one, just understanding is this product to help retain your hair so that when you're taking it down, is it to help the hair loss? or is it to help you take down your hair faster? So I think that's a point of clarification mm -hmm. that I would need to, to know. But I do think the price point, um, when you think about someone who's already invested a lot of money in getting braids, and then now you're gonna have this tool that costs around $20, it's, it's just, for me, I'm not sure if, if it would be a good sale. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to say that I love this concept. I thought she did a great job. I really like the direction of her product, uh, but her pitch, I think, will be tremendously helped by lowering the number of words. Good insight. Chris, you want to add anything? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a very interesting brand, a very interesting business. I, I actually feel like the $20 price point, Tanisha, is okay. I think it's, you know, if you could get lower, great. But right now she's 3D printing these things. That's got to be expensive. I would be worried about her margins and ability to get profitable if she lowered the price point too much. Um, and But I do love the fact that it is a point solution hero product. I think she's going to have some challenges when she starts to go to her broader vision of, you know, all these other ancillary products because the brand is the braid releaser. So it sort of ties to the specific product. But um, I think overall, it's a very interesting business. Uh, so thank you so much for your feedback and your insight. And again, Sarah, we wish you all the best of luck with the braid releaser. To vote, visit Razify.co and select today's event. Enter your donation for the pitches you loved and click the donate button to proceed to checkout. Review and confirm your donation once more by tapping donate. And finally, key in your payment info to cast your vote. Voting will be open for seven days. And remember, there is a $5 minimum for your vote to count. Your donation keeps a black or brown woman in business. You are changing the world with Black Girl Ventures. Well, up next we have Jordan Kareem, founder of Flora and Noor. All right, hi, my name is Jordan Kareem and I am the founder of Flora and Noor. Flora and Noor is a clean skincare brand that targets the skin concerns of those with melanin rich skin and chronic skin conditions starting with eczema and hyperpigmentation. We solve the vacancy of Halal certified skincare in the US, meaning all of our products are free of any alcohol, any animal byproduct, and permissible for Muslims to use. We provide skincare for clean skincare enthusiasts, those who are environmentally conscious, and those who need to use Halal certified products. 
Consumers want products that are effective, sustainable, and truly inclusive. We provide that with skincare that is reusable, reusable, recyclable, sustainable, um, and Halal certified. We are the only Halal certified skincare brand based in the U.S., and we're working towards making Halal skincare more accessible. All our formulations are high quality and effective and cleaned by Ulta, Sephora, Whole Foods, and Credo Beauty standards. As a research chemist and pharmaceutical consultant for Johnson & Johnson and Allergan, I love to see patients yield efficacious results. However, none of the products were ever halal certified or clean. Additionally, as a Black Muslim, it's hard enough finding products that target the skin concerns of those with melanin-rich skin, but I and billions of other Muslims additionally have to DIY order overseas or use prohibited products and then feel terrible about it later. So I created Flora and Noor because skincare and inclusivity goes beyond skin complexions. All of our products are sold individually, but also as skincare regimen subscriptions. Some of our best sellers and hero products are our oatmeal and shea body butter, which was inspired by my son's eczema journey, um, which is now healed and working with the oatmeal and shea body butter and our vitamin C collection, which targets hyperpigmentation, aging, uneven texture, and brightening. The skincare market is a $163 billion market. And though Halal Certified Skincare is untapped in the US, globally it is a $74 billion market and it is growing by $28 billion within the next two years. So we are getting in on that. We are available on Amazon, Bear Shop, Beauty Bridge, Walmart.com, and in physical retail at the Allure Store. We have over 4,000 customers, 2,000 subscribers, and we've increased 423% in sales in the last three months. Yes, we have competition, of course, and though they may be vegan and cruelty-free, they're not halal certified. They're not all targeting the skin concerns of those with melanin rich skin, and they don't have a subscription offering. So we are actually the most inclusive brand in the industry. We are asking for 1 million for inventory operations, marketing and staffing. This is truly a first mover advantage and we are a white space in the industry. Thank you so much. I hope that you fall in love with Flora and Noor as well as all of the other uh, consumers that have been within the last 15 months. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jordan. I appreciate you pitching and sharing your business with us. Chris, I'm gonna to come to you first. How do you feel about Flora and Noor? I feel it's very compelling. It's a, it seem, does seem like a very untapped opportunity. Um, Jordan, I'm interested in your subscription model. Um, what percentage of your consumers are adopting the subscription model versus just buying one-off products? Um, and how do you plan to grow that going forward? So far for our subscription offering, um, our consumers are um, utilizing that about 15% in comparison to all of our other consumers. And we plan on um, continuing the subscription offering um, via increased brand awareness and marketing for it. Um, and what we have seen is that our customers who have been buying once um, and their third purchase is when they start to purchase the subscription offering. Interesting. Good stuff. I want to come to you, Dawn. Any questions or feedback for Jordan? Sure, I love this. I think compelling is exactly the word, Chris. And I'm really curious about how you're targeting your audience. As you mentioned, there's a huge global market for this. I wonder what your beachhead strategy is. And then also, uh, with respect to advertising and really kind of building your top of funnel, how are you guys doing that in, uh, in this atmosphere that makes it a lot more difficult to target in the way that I think you're probably targeting? Yes, it, um, of course, as we all know, the Facebook and Instagram iOS 14 um, updates have been making it very hard um, for you know certain types of targeted marketing. Um, but we um, are also trying to gain brand awareness um, via building a community. So we do a lot of community events um, with, of course, the Muslim community um, in different cities. In fact, we just had one of our largest events with over 30,000 Muslims um, in the Chicago East Coast and 
a Midwest area. Um, and so we are really trying to uh, build a sharing community of people who have skin concerns We um, outside of our products. We um, have dermatologists and doctors on staff who interact um, with our customers online if they have any questions, um, as well as on Instagram as well. So we are also um, trying to uh, market via community building. And actually, one of our chief, our chief of marketing um, is actually a community um, brand manager for the mom project. Um, so that's a really big part of our business model as well. All right, Jordan. Well, thank you so much again for sharing your business with us. I really, we all appreciate it. And I know the champions got some really good insight. So thank you for that. So champions, I know we had a chance to listen and I know Chris and, and Dawn gave some feedback and insight. You know, Tanisha, I wanted to come to you first. Did yep. you have any insight or feedback as we are listening to her pitch? I thought it's like a, a great product. Um, um, the fact that it has such such a unique proposition versus to what's um, on the market today within skincare. We know skincare is definitely, um, sales are increasing. There's a lot more attention being given to just people in general taking care of their skin. And just to have the positioning with the halal, never even thought of that. And that is definitely filling a need. So I, I love it. And I think um, the list of competitors that Jordan listed out spot on. Mm -hmm. So I, I think this is a great, a great product. Awesome. Dawn, did you want to add something? I would love to see her focus more on the story. Um, and I think that emphasis on story would really help her, not just in pitch competitions, but also in sales pitches to retailers. Chris, you want to wrap us up? Well, and just building on that, I think that she is a very compelling founder. And so many brands, when they're getting started, that that founder story, to your point, Dawn, but also just the, the founder showing up at stores and the founder going on TikTok and the founder going on other social media sells the brand. And okay. she's super compelling. She has the credibility of having worked at J&J &J and Allergan, um, but she's also got great personality and, and uh, she's very effervescent. So, Well, champions, thank you so much for your feedback. And Jordan, we wish you all the best in your business. Up next, we have Khadija Doso, founder of Doso Beauty. I grew up in West Philly, and as a little girl, I became obsessed with making things look beautiful. I learned that beauty represents culture, community, confidence, and artistic expression. But when I visited every single beauty supply store in the city, I noticed two things. One, I couldn't find any organic products from my community. And two, none of these beauty supply stores were black owned. When the people selling the products are disconnected from the people who purchase them, you get lower quality and harmful chemicals and an out of balance business relationship. So I made it my mission to build an organic beauty brand to provide the black community with hundreds of clean and organic beauty supplies with easy access. My name is Khadija Doso and I am the proud founder and CEO of Doso Beauty, an e-commerce beauty supplier. Our hair is big business. With products and services, it generated $1.2 trillion last year for lots of entrepreneurs. Black women make up 90% of the ethnic hair and beauty market, spending about $1 trillion on hair products and services per year. But we own less than 3% of the market, which is what makes Doso Beauty uniquely qualified to develop products by us for us. I created over 150 Doso Beauty branded products within the following categories. Hair extensions, hair products, eco-friendly beauty tools, cosmetics, and skincare. All of our products were developed to address beauty concerns within the Black community. Everything we sell is clean, organic, and recyclable. Now, our hypoallergenic braiding hair is definitely the star of the show. Unlike most braiding hair in the market, our pre-stretched hair is actually cleansed prior to being packaged to avoid irritation. Consumers all over the world purchase Doso Beauty products through our e-commerce store online, walmart.com, Amazon, and GoPuff. We're on track to earn $1.2 million this year. Our average 4.86 star reviews from our Doso Beauty squad has helped us to grow exponentially over our four years in business. We're a team of 10 diverse Black women and men distributed throughout the U.S. who all share the same passion. 
helping our community to understand the importance of clean beauty. We're asking for $2.5 million to fund our payroll, create additional job opportunities, procure inventory, increase marketing, and optimize our supply chain. This company has been a dream of mine for since I was 10 years old. We're giving millions of consumers a choice that they deserve, clean and organic products from a company that came from their own community. Doso Beauty is making a global impact in the ethnic hair care market, and we would love for you to join it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Khadija, for sharing your business with us. Dawn, I'm going to start with you because she started with her fest West Philly story. And how you feel did, about that? And I loved it. <laughs> I loved it tremendously. Um, I'll say this is really interesting because hair, braiding hair and hair generally, it's a very difficult space to break into because that supply chain tends to be controlled very tightly. And if you don't have family connections that go way back, it's hard to break into. So I'd love to learn more about your supply chain. Absolutely. I mean, um, beginning the company in 2018, I started off by testing about five to seven different manufacturers. And I looked out for a few things. Number one, their respect for me as a businesswoman. Number two, the quality of the hair and also figuring out why or how if the product was actually working as far as hypoallergenic. So we do have right now a really great relationship with our key manufacturer for our braiding hair. Um, and we are distributing across multiple different channels, like I mentioned, um, Amazon, Walmart, and we also procured a 3PL as well, too, to help us out. Because every order that comes in every day, if we don't sell anything else, we're celebrating here. So our supply chain operations manager, he holds a tight ship, um, which is why I want to continue to grow that team so we can continue to make sure that we have the products in market because it's in such high demand. Tanisha, did you want to add anything as I touch my locks up here? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I definitely do. Um, hi, Khadijah. Nice to meet you. My question for you, and thank you so much for flashing um, what your projected revenue will be this year, um, but kind of walk us through how have you been um, able to organically drive marketing and drive awareness for your brand, and, and what is the plan to continue to do that? Absolutely. So we actually launched our very first billboard last month, which I'm still in shock and awe, which is on our second our second or third slide. Um, so making sure that we're getting connected with the community in Philadelphia and in all of our eight major markets is really important. Last year, we won the uh, grand prize for uh, Pharrell Williams Black Ambition Prize, which we got tons and tons of organic press as well too for. And even before then, um, we made connections through our publicists to a lot of different publications. Um, so sending products out to different people, um, making sure that we're entrenched in the community is really important. And we're really going hard right now um, on Facebook and Instagram ads, as well as Pinterest, which is a super untapped market that a lot of people don't think about. But since we're a beauty supplier and we have so many different products, we want to make sure that our consumers understand that whatever look that they're trying to achieve, whether it's their hair, whether it's their makeup look, you can click on an image and find all of the products that you need on dosobeauty.com. Nice. Well, thank you so much, Khadija, for sharing your business with us. Um, we appreciate you and we wish you much success in the future of Doso Beauty. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Well, champions, you know, I'm going to start with you first. You know, Chris, um, any thoughts or what did you think about the business as you kind of listen to us have the conversation? It's super interesting. Love to see the passion coming out of Philly. That's that's really, really cool. Um, it's interesting that she's already developed 150 products. I, I think that there's a real strength there. She's really sort of de-risked the business. Um, you know, quite often a, a, a brand will start with one or two and then, you know, they'll they'll leave it for later that to, to have more products. And it's nice that she's already done that. And it seems like at 4.86 stars, she's getting great feedback from her market. I do think though that there's this, this braid product that she's got. That's clearly her hero product. She's probably going to need to lean into that because that's probably going to be her most productive skew, but overall very compelling. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that too. I was like, does she have lock hair? Because there's so many types of hair, right. Right. you know, that you can kind of go in. So yeah, I agree. Yeah. Anybody and I think to? the other, like something great about her pitch in general, I think it was a great story from beginning to end. So we had the backstory. She told us about the need, what she was trying to feel. And hair is such a complicated market because it's overly saturated, but she was able to deliver a product that's actually filling the need and it's about having cleaner options when it comes to taking care of our hair. So I think she did a fantastic job on that.
Okay, awesome. Dawn, did you want to add anything? I would love to. So I agree that I think she's winning because of this incredible value prop. I think she's also winning because she's she understands and she's connecting with her beachhead. Everything about her story was about Philly. Um, and it sounds like she started there, really dug in there. It sounds like that's led to bigger opportunities that have gotten her the earned press, which helps her build her audience. So that's really fantastic to see. Yes. Well, champions, thank you so much for your feedback and your insight. To vote, visit Razify.co and select today's event. Enter your donation for the pitches you loved and click the donate button to proceed to checkout. Review and confirm your donation once more by tapping donate. And finally, key in your payment info to cast your vote. Voting will be open for seven days. And remember, there is a $5 minimum for your vote to count. Your donation keeps a black or brown woman in business. You are changing the world with Black Girl Ventures. Up next, we have Marcella Graham, founder of The Root Remedy. Hi, I'm Marcella and I'm the founder of The Root Remedy. The Root Remedy is the first Black female-founded beauty gummy supplement brand. We make beauty and health inclusive and genuine. I started the brand during the pandemic to help with my mental and emotional clarity. I actually got sick, like many of us, and I realized that there weren't that many Black-owned beauty brands on the shelf that felt inclusive. The Root Remedy is for the Gen Z and millennial who wants an easy way to take control of their health and beauty routine and makes purchasing decisions based off of their values. So what's the problem? 92% of the population suffers from at least one vitamin deficiency. Gummy formulas on the market right now are filled with sugars and GMOs, and there's a lack of representation in the health and beauty market. We've solved all these problems by coming up with a formula that helps manage gut health, weight loss, and clear skin. Our formula is also sugar-free, vegan, non-GMO, and soy and dairy-free, and we've built an online active community around self-care and inclusivity. Our e-commerce margins are upwards 60%, our retail margins are upwards 35%, and we have an average customer return rate of 89%. The beauty supplement market is expected to reach $76.6 billion by 2028, with a compound annual growth rate of almost 5%, gummy vitamins taking majority of the market share by 2025. So why now? We're the first movers in the beauty from within space that's black owned, this industry is gaining tons of popularity post-pandemic as the rise in the health-conscious consumer. So far, we've been able to break into TJ Maxx and Marshall stores nationwide, build an online active community, donate to nonprofits that support mental health advocacy for BIPOC, and I've sold over 4,000 units as a solopreneur. Our organic marketing strategies has landed us a lot of great press, including publications like Yahoo Finance and The Beauty Independent. So what's next? We plan to break into multiple product categories in the retail space, which truly sets us apart from our competitors. We're also coming out with a gummy vitamin with vitamin D to target the vitamin D deficiencies in the black community. And lastly, our goal is to take our customers on a self-care journey from the inside out, starting with our gummy supplements and ending with an effective skincare routine. This would allow us to touch on every customer pain point in the beauty regimen. We're at the breaking point of expansion and we're asking for your help. We're asking for $555,000 to help us with inventory and packaging, expand our team, break into the skincare market, expand our influencing marketing efforts, and introduce new gummy flavors. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marcella, for sharing your business with us. I'm gonna go to the champions to get some feedback. Chris, I am coming to you first. Questions or feedback? Yeah, I mean, overall, very interesting business, Marcella. Thank you for sharing it with us. Um, I guess my question is around distribution. So you've started with TJ Maxx and Marshalls. Um, can you talk a little bit about how those distribution partnerships came about and your vision for growing them in the future? Yes, we actually were um, presented where we were approached by TJ Maxx and Marshalls from a press release. And then we went ahead and tightened up our supply chain to make sure that those um, everything was in order there. In the future, we do plan to break into, like I said, multiple product categories in multiple retailers like the Vitamin Shop, Whole Foods, Urban Outfitters. Um, and yeah, that's where you can see us in the future. 
Tanisha, any questions or feedback from Marcella? Yes, I want to piggyback off of what um, Chris just asked. Um, so Marcella, um, I noticed that you had Ulta Beauty mentioned um, as one of the, the place of like, you know, you would like to see your product in. But my, my feedback for you is with a retailer like Ulta, so I'm a senior buyer at Ulta, um, and the feedback is genuinely when we decide to launch a brand, we like a brand that hasn't been expanded across the mass distribution. And mass would be TJ Maxx, Marshalls, those discounted stores. So um, I would encourage you when you're thinking about building out your brand and your product to really think thoroughly about where you see that pro um, product position because it can definitely kind of like hold you back if you think about your future growth. Now, I know you mentioned that you guys are looking into um, you know, future assortments and expanding the gummy line, but, and that could be an opportunity at Ulta, but just ultimately, just, just, um, just my advice for you when you're just building out an assortment, building out a brand, um, and you're thinking about that distribution strategy to really think through all of that. And I was gonna build on that if I, if I could. I mean, I think that you have an opportunity with this new product that you're coming out with, the vitamin D product. It sounds like that's very unique. And you know, Tina, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you can not take that into your other distribution and then give that product as an exclusive to a new retailer. Yep. And that increases your chances of getting in there. Yep. All right, well, thank you for sharing your business with us. Um, we appreciate you and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you guys. All right, champions, let's talk about this for a little bit. You know, Dawn, what are you thinking um, based on what you heard and some of the feedback from the other champions? Yeah, I'm chomping at the bit to get into <laughs> this. And Tanisha, I'm really interested to see what you think about this. There's a big controversy right now. Is it enough to have the focus of your value prop be on the fact that you are black owned? Well, that was another piece of the conversation that I was thinking about. and. With the supplement category, there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of product on shelf. Every day there's a new brand launching. So just being black owned is not enough mm -hmm. to sell the product. Mm -hmm. So what is the story behind it? Why do I need it? What, what makes it different than what's already out there? Because not only are there like wellness brands, but you also have hair brands that are bringing out supplements that are talking about beauty from within. So that, that is another piece to consider. Agreed, very, very competitive market. Um, but if, she, if that new product that she's talking about genuinely does deliver on uh, an un unmet need in the black and brown community, that could be absolutely huge. But she's really got to nail that part in order for it. it to be yeah. really differentiated. Yep. Well, champions, thank you so much. I appreciate your insight and feedback. It's always good to hear from these businesses, and we definitely wish her all the good luck as she moves forward. Up next, we have Francisca Francois, founder of Ava Beauty. My name is Francisca Francois. I am a cosmetologist and beauty enthusiast. My company is Ava Beauty, a brand inclusive for all, innovative, and community curated. Our mission is to create the diversity we want to see, one beauty product at a time. We are all creators. We just need the right products to showcase it. From being in the beauty industry for 10 years, I often face many challenges, not just from being a woman of color, but a woman of color with a deeper complexion. I work behind several beauty counters and with multiple clients where I face challenges such as never finding products that cater to my deeper complexion, limited product ranges for people of color, and a lack of inclusiveness in the beauty industry. Wanting to solve my own problem, I experimented with a product I personally connected with. Too many times I use eyeshadow to substitute for a product I really enjoyed. So I created Golden Hour, a highlighter that perfectly matched the hue of my complexion. And after solving my own problem, I extended the range to suit all complexions. Our competitors are drugstore and prestige brands as you can see here. Ava Beauty meets in the middle, an affordable quality brand that's inclusive and 100% cruelty free and vegan. Our community and target audience is an international organic group of Ava babes. They're beauty enthusiasts, makeup artists, and creators. They want their voices heard. They struggle finding a beauty brand that aligns with their values and true diversity and representation in product ranges. They struggle feeling they have to conform to society's beauty standards. What differentiates us from others is the true inclusion when it comes to our product range. 
Our products are created for the community, by the community. They're multi-purpose without harsh ingredients that'll harm your skin. Our Hero products is our highlighters, with Golden Hour being our number one best-selling highlighter for the past four years. And with many women and men of color sharing they've never been able to find a highlighter that perfectly suited their hue before. We offer five categories of products with a wide range. Our sales channels and our are our online sales in our first retailer located at the Culver City Mall in Los Angeles, California. We've sold over 3,500 units and 800 plus orders worldwide. We've organically been featured in publications such as Pop Sugar, Fashionista, The Zoe Report, and more, alongside En Vogue and Hello Canada magazines worldwide. Our team currently consists of myself, our community manager, and visual designer. We are seeking $250,000 for team expansion, custom manufacturing, ads and influencer marketing, especially investing in micro and nano creators who are often underrepresented. We currently have a community of 30,000 Ava babes across our social platforms. We connect with them daily. I use my 10 years of beauty expertise to create educational tutorials and knowledge to pave diversity in the beauty industry. Thank you so much for this amazing opportunity. Well, thank you so much for sharing your business with us. I'm gonna go over and have a conversation with the champions. So Dawn, I'm gonna start with you. Any feedback um, or questions about this brand? Yeah, question. I'm really interested. You led with affordability in your value proposition and that's so hard um, for you know first time, second time brand owner, owners to achieve. Uh, can you tell us more about your price point what those margins look like? So our price points, our products start between $15, which is like our highlighters and majority of our products up to $50 being like our complexion palettes. And our profit margins are 75 to 85% currently. Beautiful. Tanisha, did you want to add anything? Yeah, I just have one quick question. If you can talk us through your distribution strategy, where would you ultimately love to see the products sold? So our goal is definitely to be in stores such as Ulta and Sephora because there is still a lack of Black-owned beauty brands in those stores. And especially for women who look like me, I still challenge finding, like, you know, foundations that match my hue. Do you, are you looking to expand into complexion? Yes. So we're definitely looking to expand into complexion. But of course, we need more resources and more capital to be able to create those custom, you know, ingredients and products to be able to cater to like, you know, women like me who have different undertones and of course, being inclusive for all. Thank OK, you. well, thank you for sharing your business with us. We appreciate you and we wish you very much success in the future with your beauty brand. Thank you so much for this amazing opportunity. Bye. All right, champions. Chris, I'm gonna start with you. Any questions or feedback uh, kind of still muddling around? I mean, I think it's it's very interesting. I think every once in a while in the beauty industry, a brand comes along that pushes the limits of of where we're what we're thinking about, what we're talking about. And this feels like it has some aspects to it that could really do that. They're, they're pushing hard on diversity, pushing hard on inclusion, pushing hard on the shades and, and the hues. I think that's really, really interesting. I think she has this, uh, she has a wonderful name and the logo is very compelling. Um, she's got a compelling story. And then she's got this thing, the Ava Babes. Mm -hmm. And I would love to see how she can activate that to yeah. really drive brand awareness because if you can add brand awareness to this that's just gasoline on the fire yep. i would agree Go ahead. Okay. i'd love to get into the nuance here because we just talked about in the last pitch uh, that being black owned isn't enough right it has to relate to your value proposition mm -hmm. here she has a value proposition mm -hmm. that matters yeah, right exactly. uh, and i think you know we want to cater to different skin tones mm -hmm. and there's this per perception in the space that well we've got fenty beauty well we've got minted yeah. we've, we've we've covered that base but we haven't covered that base yet. Can you, either of you, talk more about um, how wide that gap still is? And that's where my head was at it. Um, I think she hit on something very special. As many offerings as we do have in makeup, there is still a gap, there is still a void, and there is still an opportunity um, because our skin tone, right, is all shades. And sometimes, like even a brand as great as Fenty 
has Fifty Shades, but sometimes it's that undertone. It's just something that's still missing. There's a, a guest who has a darker complexion, cannot still find the perfect shade. So I think her positioning makes sense. And I think we there's there's enough and there's more opportunity for more brands to, to be offered up to um, customers because we're, we're not feeling that need. We think that we are based off of the number of the brands are on the market, but when it gets down to it and you, you think about complexion, because it can be very, very intimidating, yes. there's still much more that we should be doing. That's right. Yeah. Thank you for your feedback. Thank you for your insight. I'm sure she got some great content from it. To vote. Visit Razify.co and select today's event. Enter your donation for the pictures you loved and click the donate button to proceed to checkout. Review and confirm your donation once more by tapping donate. And finally, key in your payment info to cast your vote. Voting will be open for seven days. And remember, there is a $5 minimum for your vote to count. Your donation keeps a black or brown woman in business you are changing the world with Black Girl Ventures. Up next, we have Leah Pittard, founder of Glitter Realm Cosmetics. Hey, Glitter Gang. I am Leah Pittard, the founder of Glitter Realm Cosmetics. I have a love for avant-garde makeup, creative, bright, bold, experimental looks that transform you into a living canvas. My love for makeup as an art form is what led to the creation of Glitter Realm. Glitter Realm is a customer-led experiential beauty brand that leverages content and community to empower all artists. We specialize in eco-friendly, multi-use cosmetics that are ultra-pigmented, vibrant, 100% cruelty-free, and vegan. After hosting beauty events featuring local artists of color, LGBTQ+, and disabled artists, I realized the lack of product resources available to these creators, and more importantly, the negative impact that archaic beauty standards have on the mental health of artists and customers alike. This contributes to the lack of diversity, innovation, and wasteful products dominating the industry. Did you know that the beauty packaging and the beauty industry as a whole contributes 146 billion tons of waste every year? So where's the bio glitter? The utopia is achieved through inclusivity, representation, innovation, and opportunity. Glitter Realm is committed to amplifying the voices of marginalized creators while bringing you high quality, sustainably produced makeup. Our mission is to inspire and bridge the gap between creator, company, environment, and mental health in our community. This is why our product development is customer and artist driven. Together, we have created products that have you asking, what can't this do? Our cosmic paint, pro color palettes, and pigments can be used as foundation, body paint, eyeshadow, eye primer, lipstick, special effects makeup, and so much more. And with the introduction of bioplastic packaging, we continue to reduce our environmental impact. The clean beauty market is estimated to reach $22 billion by 2024. Our target audience is millennial and Gen Z beauty lovers from the ages of 18 and 35, but honestly, all bodies are living canvases waiting to express themselves without rules. Our top competitors are Mayron, Suva Beauty, and Wet n Wild Beauty. Although these companies offer a variety of colors, none offer our multi-use palettes and paint that are crack-proof, smudge-proof, and matte drying for 12 or more hours, and none are utilizing bioplastic packaging. We embrace true inclusivity in everything that we do. Art is something that makes you breathe with a different kind of happiness, and we are that breath of fresh air. We are a DTC brand via our website, social media, and amazon.com, and we are B2B on fair.com. In 2021, we had a revenue of over $250,000 with a 48% return customer rate. We have a growing network of over 400,000 creators, supporters, and beauty lovers from all over the world. Our team at The Realm consists of myself, the founder, and my assistant, Nana Rose, along with our community of 150 plus glitterologists from all over the globe. Some of the looks you've seen here today using our cosmetics. We are asking for $1 million for product, team, and market expansion to help bring our five-star beauty brand to artists worldwide. Thank you so much for this opportunity and welcome to The Realm. Thank you so much, glitterologist. I like that. Good word, good word. So Dawn, I'm gonna start with you. Any feedback or insight for this particular pitch? So, you know, I thought it was really interesting that your beachhead is the creator rather than having some distinct niche and then going to a creator and 
hoping that they'll latch on. You've tailored your products to the creator needs. I'd like for you to offer us, offer us any ideas, any insight into just how powerful uh, having that creator network has been, how they're driving revenues, and how they're driving eyeballs to your brand. Honestly, my creator network is everything. We have generated friendships and business partnerships and relationships that extend beyond my business. We help um, contribute to the benefits of mental health with our contributors and also the bottom line with the business. If I had no artists on my team, the business would not exist, just like every other business that needs to function in 2022. All right, Chris, any questions or feedback for Leah? Yes, uh, picking up on Don's notion of the, the beachhead, which is, is, is absolutely critical when you're when you're doing a startup. The point of, of getting a beachhead is that you you land, but then you expand to a broader consumer base. So as you think about the business going forward, how do you think about expanding beyond the current creators and accessing that, that broader majority that would be using the product, whether that's retailers and or consumers and, and sort of making that jump more to the more mainstream? To, to your point, the creators drive everything from business to all the trends that are happening to the lifestyle. So in regards to how I plan on expanding that, I will be broadening my color selections to attract people that may be nervous to try to have a blue eyelid. So they might want to dabble in makeup, but they might not be comfortable with color per se. But our artists are there that go live and do different tutorials to show them how versatile our products are. So they are for everyone, not just the person that's already comfortable in their creativity, but also for the person who wants to discover and embrace their own creativity as well. All right, Leah, thank you so much for sharing your business with us. So champions, I know there's a couple things that are probably floating around in your brain. You know, Tanisha, I'm gonna come to you first. Yeah, for me, it's it's really about the positioning of this, this brand. It feels more like an artistry brand versus a consumer brand. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that is something you know, to consider if you do want to, you know, um, offer it up to the masses because it could be intimidating. And then I also think about there are a lot of similar products out here um, that focus on that eye makeup. Um, and I, I haven't seen great success of, of it launching in a retailer like Ulta. Um, not to say that it doesn't have success, but I do think it, it, it's just a positioning that I'm a little bit unclear about being an artistry brand because the, the looks that were demonstrated, look they just look very exaggerated. So to an everyday consumer, will they get it? Will they understand it? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think Leah's gonna have to make a decision as she builds the business. Do I want to remain a niche brand for the creator? Mm -hmm. And she's very it's very compelling and mm -hmm. it's very interesting and it's she's got a her her realmologist or what were they, the the realm that you know, her glitterologist. Yep. She's got her core. But to expand, she's going to have to diff be different from that core. Exactly. And that's going to she's going to have to be decide whether she wants to own that niche or change the brand and go more broad. There's an opportunity here because there's so many brands that don't even get that beachhead, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's so hard and so difficult. We've already skipped that and we're asking her about step two. Yeah. All right, how do you get into the mainstream? So at least she's got that piece down. She's bought herself some time to figure out the rest of the puzzle. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, champions, thank you so much for your feedback and your insight. I know that as she was listening, she probably took some copious notes. And again, we appreciate you. All right. Well, we have some awesome and amazing pitches. What I want to hear from you is any final words or thoughts that you want to leave the founders to marinate on. Chris, I'm going to start with you and then I'm going to end with Dawn. Any lasting words? Yeah, I mean, I think that we saw some very compelling pitches today, and it's you can't help but be um, inspired by the the energy and the creativity, and you know, optimistic about the future because these ideas just keep coming. I would say, know when you're getting into a beauty business. Um, we were talking about there are 55,000 hair care brands. I think there's a couple hundred thousand beauty brands mm -hmm. on the market. And so when you go into it, you need to be very intentional about why does the world need my brand and how is my brand very different from the rest? Um, but we saw some very interesting ones here today. I would agree. I think we saw some incredible brands um, and it just goes to how just fast this beauty market is. Um, and there's always a need that is not being met. And I think that's that's the, the beauty of having these entrepreneurs come on and present their product because they're trying to solve a need. 
but it's also very important to think about that need that you've identified. Is it marketable? Is it sellable? Is it profitable? So I think that is my advice too to all of the, the candidates today. So just to think about like, you know, is it profitable because we're, you want to do it to make money? And also how does it stand against other um, competitors that may sell like product? Mm -hmm. Dawn, close us out. You know, this is so interesting because I think today we really demonstrated something that's near and dear to my heart as a beauty founder. Um, a lot of times when people see a beauty brand, they think, you know, glitter and pretty people. And that's not what most of these brands are about. With few exceptions, these ladies are solving real problems in the lives of real women. Um, and that's what entrepreneurship is ultimately about, right? Um, and I think a lot of folks, a lot of investors, a lot of folks in the venture space, they get it wrong there. They don't take beauty seriously. They don't see uh, you know, the way that this intersects with our lives in real ways. These founders have demonstrated exactly that. Well, thank you so much. I couldn't have said it better myself. Champions, we appreciate your insight and your feedback and being a part of this uh, competition. To vote, visit Razify.co and select today's event. Enter your donation for the pictures you loved and click the donate button to proceed to checkout. Review and confirm your donation once more by tapping donate. And finally, Key in your payment info to cast your vote. Voting will be open for seven days. And remember, there is a $5 minimum for your vote to count. Your donation keeps a black or brown woman in business. You are changing the world with Black Girl Ventures. Thank you so much for tuning into the Black Girl Ventures Beauty Pitch Competition. I want to personally thank Rare Beauty Brands and Ulta Beauty for being our sponsor. And thank you to all the founders. We know how hard you worked on your pitch and, of course, the champions. Now, Black Girl Ventures' mission is to help black and brown women founders gain access to capital, community, and capacity. We envision a world where all ideas have a chance to succeed. You can follow us on Instagram at Black Girl Ventures and Twitter at B Girl Ventures and visit our website, blackgirlventures.org. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to vote with your dollars at raiseify.co. That's R-A-I-S-I-F-Y dot C-O. Again, my name is Quinn Conyers, your energetic MC. We'll see you all soon.